I think I'm gonna change how the tiles are laid out here because this countertop is supposed to be like the mark for the kitchen area in their little unit thing. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if they would even have a kitchen in this little unit thing. Because it'd be kind of luxurious for them to have something like this. So I don't know if I'm going to keep this as tiles or like, uh, like make it a rug and just put really small kitchen appliances in here. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. But, uh, this will be it for now. <laughs> what is going on? The food in that kitchen better be bussing. Nah, man. They'll be lucky if they can get a can of beans in that kitchen, which is what's making me wonder if they should even have a kitchen area. Because in the script, I never mentioned a kitchen, but when I was writing the script, every time I visualized this area, there was a little kitchen spot. So I don't know if I should keep it as a kitchen or if I should change it into like, just they're using the counter to divide the areas. So someone will sleep on the couch here. And then there's like another couch on the other side of the counter. I'm not sure. I'll figure it out. I think I might leave the... Mm, I'm really th overthinking it now. If I want to keep the kitchen area or if I just want to put a rug there. Realistically, there wouldn't be a kitchen in this dorm room because uh, that means there would be a kitchen in all the dorm rooms. And I don't know. Feels a bit weird. I like Maynard as a character because he's just so fluffy. Like you draw an oval for his face but then so much fluff goes on him that by the time you're done drawing his face you can't even tell that an oval was originally there because there's just so many layers of fluff. Like this. This whole bottom half of the oval is gone now. And all this area is gonna go away because of the hair. I forgot to finish drawing his hair, fuck. Uh, good gravy. The problem with drawing characters with such sharp like edges all the time, or, like such pointed edges all the time, is that when I'm trying to just draw for the sake of drawing, I tend to forget what angle certain straight lines are at in order to make it look right. So then you draw it and you're like, wait, this doesn't look right, but it's only it's just a bunch of straight lines. And it's just like the angle you drew the straight lines, that makes the whole thing look weird. Boy, yeah, I know. Maynard's, like, hair shape is constantly shifting. Just because I can never replicate the same angle twice, and that's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad, but, like, it looks consistent enough, it's fine. It's not like he's completely changing hairstyles in every shot. Ah, oh, that ear needs to be thicker. Sometimes I hate watching animation because the character turns and the camera spins around them and the hair goes wonky. Uh, it depends on how wonky because sometimes like you kind of need to do that to display the flow and the movement of the hair, which I get. But like, I, I agree, sometimes people go a bit too far when they do the, the hair swoop or the hair swoosh, whatever you want to call it. Um, I guess it just depends on how fast the character is moving and how drastic the the swoop is. Because one of my favorite reasons, one of my favorite things I like about animating uh, Siobhan, for example, because she's got that giant like antenna type hair flick on her head. I like to play around with that and like have it blow behind her or in front of her in the wind or like, you know, just go a little bit crazy with it because it's fun. Um, but it's very, very easy to go too far when it comes to that stuff. I'm kind of excited for book three, if I'm being honest. Like, I know it sounds weird because I'm not even up to page 50 of uh, book two. And in terms of releasing book one, book one's like not even a quarter of the way through. I think it's, I think it's almost a quarter of the way through. Um, so it feels weird for me to be like, oh yeah, book three. Um, but I'm excited for book three because in book three, some of the characters are going to get a little bit of a redesign just kind of to show that time has passed and stuff. Um, Siobhan is one of those characters and I'm really excited because I really like, like, 
I like how Siobhan looks traditionally. Uh, and if you see her before the apocalypse as well, she, her hair is a little bit different, but other than that, she's pretty much the same. Um, but I don't know, I'm just really excited for people to see the new, uh, the new side of Siobhan because she's, uh, I really like it. It's fun. I think it suits her in terms of where her story is going. I haven't drawn her in like the the Forget Me Not 3 look in a really long time though because it's mostly just concept art and sketches right now. Uh, so it might change and I might end up deciding to keep her original look, but I don't know. I feel like by the time book 3 comes around it'll be time for at least some of the characters to get a makeover. Ah. I can draw, I promise. <laughs> Again, I promise. I'm a little bit, uh, I don't know how to feel about Caden's, like, physique, because sometimes he looks kind of buff, and I don't like it, but sometimes he looks like a fucking twink, and I also don't like that, um, so he's, like, kind of average in the middle, I don't think I like that, I want him to be more on one side than the other, but if I put him more on either side, then my bot my brain is like, ew, I don't like it, <laughs> so, not great. There we go. Actually, no, there we don't go. I don't like that. Caden's hair is really hard to draw on a side profile. Um, and I don't really know why. <laughs> I, I think it's got to do with all the, the points and curves and, like, where they have to line up in order to sit but also be even for the side of his hair and, like, how to... Uh, make it look uneven but also like in proportion on the other side i don't know for some reason Caden's side profile is not uh not easy for me like see that would have been too big because you gotta have a big hoop on this side and then like a little a little hoop underneath it but it can't be too small in comparison to the big one and i just oh the peak of character design was so there we go. Actually, even then, I feel like that's not right because it, like, sticks out too much. Like, all of this needs to come in. Even then, it still looks kind of weird. May not, uh, may not. Caden's side profile is probably the most difficult uh, character-related shot that I, that I do. Simply because every other character... I can, like, I don't have to be precise and it still, like, looks like them, but because Caden's got a lot of very precise and kind of, like, iconic character features about his hair and, like, the way his face is and stuff like that, kind of have to be, a, like, a lot more precise with uh, how I draw his side profiles. And it's annoying. But also, I designed the character. <laughs> Professional lurker. Yeah, that makes sense. I can get behind that. My life is a balancing act and I am one, like, wrong step away from falling over and dropping everything. <laughs> oh, she's so cute though. Look at her smile. Oh, she's baby. She wants baby. I kind of want to do a survey and see who people's favorite forget-me-not character is. Because so far it's, like, so far Siobhan is the favorite by quite a fair bit. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't see that coming. <laughs> um, I have had people tell me that they resonate with Caden, that they like Caden. Uh, I have a cousin who straight up just thinks Caden is attractive, uh, which is fair, you know. I'm not, I'm not gonna... <laughs> there was a point in my life where I too thought Caden was kind of attractive, so, you know, it is what it is. Um... But I kind of want to keep that, I want to do like, after Forget Me Not Asinite is done, like a little poll of who's people, who people's favourite characters are. I'm going to shorten this a little bit because that's actually a bit long. I want to see what people think after, like at the end of Asinite, what people think of Caden and Siobhan and people haven't really commented on Hayley. Uh, which is fair enough because in part one of Forget Me Not, in Forget Me Not Asinite, Haley is much more of just like a prop to keep the story going forward than she is an actual character. 
Like, she definitely has a personality. It's definitely... There is definitely a character there. Um, it's just for the sake of Forget-Me-Not-1 and, like, you know, the perspective that Forget-Me-Not-1 is in because it's, like, almost entirely from Caden's point of view. Um, she doesn't feel like much of a character. She's more of a... I don't think MacGuffin is the right word for Haley, but I'm going to say it anyway. She's a bit more of a MacGuffin than a character. Um, which some people would say is a fault of the story, but again, considering the perspective the story is in and the fact that the whole thing is about what Caden thinks of her and stuff like that, I think it makes sense for us to only see what Caden sees, which is not much. <laughs> um, but later on, like quite a bit later on, but still later on, you actually get to see more of, um, more of Haley's personality, I guess, and like more of the tropes, not tropes, but like more of the characteristics that she has. Um, and the Forget Me Not prequel is probably where you see the most of it because the prequel is going to be from Haley's point of view. So you'll get the most characterization of Haley from there. Like you'll see how um, how her and Caden became friends, what led to Caden deciding that he didn't like her anymore. Um, watching her go over that kind of stuff and like her own interests and her own hobbies and stuff. Um, I feel like the prequel will be really, really good for Haley, And it's unfortunate that for the sake of the story, she didn't get much development in Asinite. Because I'm I'm not going to lie, part of me is worried that when the prequel comes out, people are going to think that I'm just trying to flesh out a character for the sake of <laughs> milking the character and milking the story. Uh, which isn't what I want to do. The whole point of the prequel is to kind of show how people perceive different events, uh, well, how people perceive the same event differently. Um, because if you've started reading Forget Me Not Asinite, you'll know that Caden blames Haley for quite a few things. Uh, one thing in particular, <laughs> I, it's not really that much of a spoiler if I do say it, but I'm not gonna say it just because I feel like you should read the fucking comic. <laughs> but, um, he blames her for a lot of things, one thing in particular, and I feel like it's important to get that event that Caden blames her for from her perspective and like see how she feels about it and how she thinks things happened and stuff, um, which is why the prequel is even a thing. It's also going to be fleshing out the relationship between uh, Haley and Siobhan, because again, if you read the comic, Haley and Siobhan have a bit of... Um, a bit of chemistry that's hinted at, but not directly um, mentioned. Uh, and if you if you're on my Twitter, you know that Siobhan is asexual, but she's also gay, gay, homosexual, gay. So uh, if you if you're on Twitter and you read the comic, it's very very easy to put two and two together <laughs> in terms of Siobhan and Haley's relationship. Um, but the prequel is supposed to dive into that a lot more too. And just kind of flesh them both out a little bit. Forget Me Not 2, Forget Me Not Astromeria, the one that I'm working on right now, um, is kind of where Siobhan gets the most development. Like, book one was exclusively Caden's development, and Siobhan and Haley were more side pieces. Siobhan had more personality and more of a... She was more of a foil to Caden than Haley was. Haley was more of the obstacle. Um... But here in Forget Me Not 2, Siobhan really, really gets to grow into her own and, like, become her own person with her own, like, uh, thoughts and feelings. Like, she was in book, in Asinite. In Forget Me Not Asinite, she very much had her own thoughts and feelings and she was very vocal about it. But, um, Astral Myria kind of puts a microscope over her own feelings and her own thoughts and it becomes much more of a focus, um in Ash in Astral Myria, which I think is a good thing. I mentioned it in an earlier stream, but basically I think it's good that the series slowly goes away from Caden as the books go on. Um, 
So yeah, Siobhan gets a lot more spotlight in Astral Muria, and I'm excited for that. I'm excited because, like I said, a lot of people really like Siobhan, <laughs> which, again, I'd be lying if I said I didn't expect it, but a lot of people have grown quite attached to her. Um, so I'm really excited to see how they feel about how her character develops in book two. Because I feel like... I don't know how the fan base is going to react, but I feel like what she goes through and how her character grows is only going to strengthen people's, like, uh, admiration for her, if that makes sense. Oh, okay, like a general rundown of Forget-Me-Not. Yeah, I can do that. Um, well, first and foremost, it's a, it's a zombie comic. Um, there's quite a few zombies in book one, and then in book two, because of the location they're in, you don't see them as much, but they are still relevant. Uh, but the zombies are just the setup in order for, in order to really display the drama. It's, I label it as a zombie drama series, but it's more of a, it's more of a relationship analysis. I not love specifically, love is mentioned and romantic relationships are mentioned, but it's more about relationships in general. Um, book one specifically is about the past and uh, whether or not you can let go of your past in order to create a stable future, if that makes sense. Um, because the main premise for book one is that the zombie apocalypse starts, Caden has lost everything and everyone, so it seems, and then he runs into Siobhan and Haley, who were his childhood friends. He still loves Siobhan very much, but when he meets Haley again, he seems really angry and really agitated. And Haley, who claims to have memory loss and like can't actually remember a lot of her past, doesn't know why this stranger is angry at her. Like she sees Caden as a stranger. Caden sees her as a childhood friend that he absolutely hates now. Um, and the whole premise is whether or not Caden has the ability to kind of move on from whatever happened between them in the past and work together to live with her in the zombie apocalypse. I have a video about it on my YouTube channel already. Uh, but essentially, Forget Me Not, Asinite, the first book, was originally, uh, in the very, very, very first versions of the script, I don't think it was even a zombie comic at first, um, but I had had a friend since 2016. We'd been friends for like two years at that point. Um, but I had a friend and essentially what had happened was this friend got a partner and uh, a lot of the vibes that their partner was giving me were like red flags to me. Uh, something didn't feel right. And so I tried to mention that to my friend but as I mentioned in a previous stream, I struggle a lot with wording things correctly and like wording things properly to a point where if I know what I'm trying to say, then sometimes I literally cannot understand how other people can take what I'm saying any other different way. Um, which meant that what even though what I thought I was saying was very straightforward and like civil, um, what he heard was very very aggressive <laughs> and sounded like I was attacking his girlfriend um, and I'm not gonna lie I look back on those messages sometimes and I know why he thought I was attacking his girlfriend I understand uh, because now I can see how what I said was taken differently and even though I didn't mean to be aggressive I did use very aggressive language so I understand but um, we ended up having a massive fight. He made like a two page Google Doc about me and how shitty of a person I was, even though we had never fought before this. As far as my memory serves me, this was our first like actual fight. Um, 
like our, our first serious fight and he made this massive document about how I was a shitty person um which I don't think ever got released to the public I hope it didn't um and then like all of his friends started bomb disliking a specific video that I made a specific animation that I made because he claimed that he didn't consent to one of his characters being used even though I have a screenshot of him consenting to me using his character so his, his friends decided to mass dislike it anyway um, I was being subtweeted uh, these friends of his who had never even met me were being really really harsh and cruel um, and then one of his friends slid into my DMs and pretended to be my friend so that she could get more dirt on me and she could like go back to him and be like, oh, Sylph said this and Sylph said this and blah, 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 blah. And it was just a really, really terrible time for me. And at the time, like I said, I know why now he thought I was being aggressive, but at the time I didn't. So in order to kind of help me process what the fuck had just happened and why I lost one of my best friends for like two years, I decided to start writing Forget Me Not Asinite. Um, and Caden was originally a representation of that friend, and Haley was originally a representation of myself. Um, and I say originally because over time these characters grew to be their own, well, characters with their own personality traits and like their own wants and needs and stuff like that. Um, so they're not, we're not the same people anymore. And I have to say that for legal reasons, because this guy scares me so much that I feel like if he was to ever read Forget Me Not Asinite, he would try and sue me for defamation of character. Um, which I don't even think he can do, because technically speaking it would be libel because it's written, but whatever. Um, and I say in the YouTube video how Caden is different to this person. Um, and like what elements I took from him and what elements I took from other people just so that it's very very clear that Caden is not this person um, but I started writing the scripts to kind of get a better understanding on what happened and then I made my uh, one of my university projects lucid dreams about what had happened and then I kind of got over it and I dropped Caden I dropped Haley I dropped Siobhan and I just kind of went about my own thing uh, and then I fell in love with The Walking Dead and then I wanted to pick up the characters again and long story short that's how Forget Me Not Asinite came to be. If you want a more detailed uh, a more detailed like story time type thing about how Forget Me Not came to be and why it is the way it is like I said I have the YouTube video that goes more into depth about um, the message of Forget Me Not and like what the characters represent and stuff like that so I don't want to go over it too much now because it feels like I'm just going to regurgitate the same information. But yeah, Forget Me Not Asinite was a very, very important story to me. Um, and then I just couldn't let the characters go when I finished writing the script for Forget Me Not Asinite. So I was just like, okay, Forget Me Not's going to be like a multi-part thing. And Forget Me Not 2 is going to focus on something different. Forget Me Not 3 is going to focus on something different. You know? Um, just because I had a lot of fun writing these characters and these characters helped me process quite a difficult thing for me personally. Um, a lot of the elements in Forget Me Not 2 are inspired by uh, arguments and disparities that I've had with my current best friend. Because my current best friend and I have been in a lot of arguments and a lot of misunderstandings because sometimes we just can't listen to each other. Um, and I have his consent to uh, take inspiration from those messy arguments and put them in the story. I've asked him multiple times on multiple occasions and he said yes every single time. And even then I twisted them in a way that made it not very obvious that they were inspired by a real life event. So when you read it you won't even know which scenes <laughs> were inspired by real events and which ones weren't. Um, which I think is the best way to do it, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Forget Me Not is basically my processor, is essentially what it is. Um, 
And that was a very long tangent because I wanted to start talking about writing from experience. Uh, whoops, that's not what I want. Uh, I want to start talking about writing from experience because that's usually the number one piece of advice that writers will give other writers. Or like people who are aspiring authors trying to get their foot in the door or like they want to try writing their own thing but they're not too sure how to start. Usually the number one piece of advice that other authors will give is to write what you know and write from experience. But writing from experience, at least in my, um, well, experience, <laughs> isn't as black and white as that because usually our experiences involve other people and sometimes other people don't want that experience to be shared you know what i'm talking about it's it's a balancing act um when it comes to writing from experience and i feel like that's something that at least me personally i haven't seen people talk about and i think it's incredibly important um because if you literally just write what you know if you take the phrase write what you know just that little bit too literally and you write almost like word for word an event that happened to you that involves someone else or you write like um let's use forget me not as an example let's say that i didn't change the story i didn't start exaggerating things and shifting things or anything like that and the story was literally just a direct retelling of what happened between me and this other person. That person could absolutely, absolutely definitely prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt that Caden is him in that version of the story. And he would have every right to sue me for slander or libel. I forget which one is written, but I'm pretty sure libel is the written form. He would absolutely be able to do that and he would win. Uh, <laughs> and that's not good, um, because, again, he'd be able to prove that that's him, and a lot of the time, that's not something that you want to happen. You don't want people to be able to prove that a certain character was based off of them, or, like, a certain character is them. There's a difference between a character being based off of someone and a character just straight up being someone, you know? Um, and that's important to recognize as well, but... If I kept the original version of the script where Caden literally was this other person, I would get in a lot of legal trouble. Like, a lot of legal trouble. It's actually scary how, how easily I would get in serious trouble if I didn't edit that script. Um, and I feel like that's something that people don't mention when they say, Oh yeah, just write from experience. Oh yeah, just write what you know. Because there's a lot of people especially i don't want to say especially nowadays but like there's a lot of people who have been through trauma and there's a lot of creatives that give their characters trauma that is similar to what they have um in order to process things in order to like find comfort and stuff like that that is not an uncommon thing unfortunately um hang on i'm trying to like find the correct spot to do this there we go um yeah, unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who give their characters trauma similar to them. Or, even worse, trauma similar to their friends without actually addressing the friend or, like, getting consent from the friend. And that is incredibly concerning. Because what if that friend didn't want that trauma shared? What if, like... I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. Um... And I want to use a very specific scenario. I'm going to try and be vague about it because it's technically a spoiler for Forget Me Not uh, Astral Miria. But there's a scene between Zendaya and Siobhan that is inspired by something that... Well, an experience that I had with a friend of mine. Um, except, spoiler alert... It wasn't actually my experience, it was her experience. I'm just counting, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, okay. It wasn't my experience, it was my friend's experience. Um, and 
it was an experience that meant a lot to me because it like she kind of opened up to me about something and we we had a really nice moment and it was really sweet um and i wanted to include that in forget me not ash and Weiria because you know it was something that was important to me and i wanted to you know i wanted to use it um but like i said even though i was present in that moment and you know she was talking to me and we shared that experience that was not my experience to share and i knew that i knew that so i went to this friend and i said hey do you remember this conversation that we had or this thing that we did um because it meant a lot to me and i want to use it in the story but also i want to make sure that you're comfortable with me using it in the story because the experience that i want to write about isn't actually about me, like, at all. <laughs> like, at all, at all. Um, and my friend was very, very understanding. She a was actually quite touched that I wanted to share it and put it in Forget-Me-Not, so she let me do it. Um, one, two, three, I believe there was six. Um, so I was lucky enough, and I got the permission to add what I wanted to add into the story, um, which, again, always, always, always do. Um... I'm going to restart this because I don't like how the lines look. I think I'm going to do the horizontal lines first. Um, and yeah, because I got her permission and I got her consent, there's a really, really powerful moment between Zendaya and Siobhan. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I get to have that really nice, powerful moment. I get to, I get to do that because I got consent from every party that was involved with that interaction. Now, obviously, obviously, there are some situations that people will want to write about where it might actually, it's, it's not the best idea to ask for consent. And in fact, approaching the other person that was involved might be dangerous. I, I understand that. I understand that. That is where you need to be really, really careful um, with the whole slander and libel thing. You need to... It's like... It's like inspirations, right? Uh, one, two, three. You, when people say to take inspiration from something, whether it's an artist or another book or whatever, they always tell you to take inspiration from multiple places. And they tell you to take inspiration from multiple places because you don't want people to think that you're just ripping off another thing. You need to make it enough of your own thing for it to stand out on its own. And usually... The way you would do that is by taking inspiration from multiple different sources and making, like, kind of melting them together to make something different. One, two, three, four, five. I don't think I'm going to have enough room. That's fine. Um, and I, the same can be said for experiences. When it comes to experiences, you don't want to draw from the one experience alone. Because, again, if you do, you can get in a lot of trouble. People could be able to prove that this character is beyond a shadow of a doubt a representation of them not even a representation straight up them and if you happen to be writing about an experience with someone that was kind of dangerous or kind of yucky or whatever then you could get in a lot of serious trouble it's there's literally no other way to say it you can get in trouble for doing stuff like this um so the best thing to do is to draw from multiple experiences and multiple inspirations at the same time and add your experiences to the melting pot of inspiration rather than just straight up writing what you know. And I feel like stuff like that is what saves certain books. Um, and I'm going to be bold and say that that's what saves Forget Me Not <laughs> because like Forget Me Not Yes was originally inspired by this one traumatic event and this one asshole in my life, but I drew so much inspiration from so many different people and so many different mediums that right now, as the story is currently, there is one thing, one event between Haley and Caden that I had in common with this person. And everything else is completely made up. <laughs> everything else is completely made up and there is no way for them to prove, aside from that one thing, aside from that one tiny thing, 
They have no way of proving that Caden is beyond a shadow of a doubt them. Because Caden is not beyond a shadow of a doubt them. Caden is his own boss ass bitch. <laughs> and he'll do whatever the fuck he wants. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm getting kind of tired, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, but yeah, just be careful when you're writing from experience. Yeah, so just make sure you're drawing inspiration from multiple different experiences. Make sure that all your bases are covered and you don't like, you don't accidentally put anything too personal or too um, explicit in your work in terms of being able to identify a person. Um, because, yeah, if you get involved with the wrong kind of people, then this will turn really bad for you really quickly. And I don't want that for anybody. Um, that being said, your experiences are your own and you're allowed to share them in any way you like. Um, just be careful, be safe. I took some extra precautions and again, took inspiration from multiple different people and multiple different experiences just to make sure that what I was doing was telling a story and not, you know, just making a comic shit talking one asshole in particular. Yeah, writing, writing from experience is a lot easier said than done because a lot of people think that writing from experience is just the safest thing to do when you don't know what to write. Um, but writing from experience well, doing it correctly. But yeah, like, uh, writing from experience is the same as taking inspiration from things. In the sense that it's... On paper, it's good advice. On paper, it's good advice. Um, but it takes a lot of practice to be able to do something like that well. Um, much like most things in writing. The edit for this stream is gonna look so weird because the fucking... The size of Clip Studio Paint is just gonna keep changing. <laughs> there we go. Done. With the series, when you started the project, did you already have an ending in mind? Like, what's what's it gonna be and look like? Or did you only know the beginning? Um, when I first started writing the script, when I wrote the script just to process the, uh, for lack of a better word, trauma that this person left me with, no, I didn't have a clear direction. Except for one thing. Throughout the entire comic, there was one thing that I wanted to happen, and I am not going to tell you what it is, because it is probably the biggest spoiler that I could give <laughs> for this entire comic. Um, so we're not gonna do that. But there is one thing that I knew from the start that I wanted to happen. Um, and everything else just kind of fit into place. Like, I didn't, after I made my uh, animation, my Lucid Dreams animation, I kind of, didn't I felt like I didn't need to keep making forget me not because I had lucid dreams to process like the trauma of what I was going through when it happened so I felt like I didn't need forget me not anymore and I dropped it for a really really long time um and it wasn't until I started uh, watching playthroughs of telltales the walking dead that made me kind of want to try again but with something different like originally uh Caden and Haley had a very strange dynamic and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with them there was a point in time where Caden just straight up was a demigod and that was that was it that was his character trait um but then I started getting more and more into zombie content and I realized that I wanted forget me not to be a zombie story um and yeah that's kind of how it went from there in terms of like plot points, like specific plot points, um, they kind of came to me as I wrote the script. Again, except for one thing that I can't mention by name because it's a spoiler. Um, but everything else came to me as it happened. Like I have screenshots on my phone of me and my best friend talking and the screenshots are literally just me and him brainstorming like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if this happened? Or, oh, wouldn't it be cool if that happened? And 
uh, I still have those screenshots because what I would do is I would brainstorm with him and then I would screenshot the conversation and then when I got to a part of the story where I was like, oh, this idea would really fit here or like, you know, hmm, maybe I need to try something else and try something different, I would go through the screenshots that I took and the brainstorm conversations that we would have um, and I would just kind of write on the fly. There were certain key elements that I knew I wanted from the story, but ugh, almost all of it was made up on the spot. Um, I, I did a similar thing for Forget Me Not um, Astromeria, which again, <laughs> sound like a broken record, but that's the, the comic that I'm working on now, part two, Astromeria. Um, I did a similar thing in the sense that I knew how I wanted the characters to develop. Um, I knew what character traits I wanted to really hone in on and what I wanted the characters to go through in order to grow and change. I knew all of that stuff, but uh, like in terms of outside factors, like what was happening outside of the characters, personal like growth and development and stuff um that all just kind of came together as it went along like i said forget me not astral miriam had a very very different script kind of early on um but that version of the script didn't get very far and i had to completely change the outside situation that's like revolving around these characters in order for the main story to work um so, I, and I feel like that's the best way for me personally to write, and if anyone was asking me for writing advice, I would probably give this to them. Although everyone is different, so if this doesn't work for you, don't beat yourself up. There's probably just a different writing style that's a better fit for you. But I like to know how the characters grow, if they grow at all, how the characters change, if they change at all, and... Um, just kind of just that kind of stuff the beginning and the end specifically as well everything else just kind of fits into place as you're writing I don't think it's a good idea to have um, to be too rigid with your ideas it's very free-flowing you shouldn't um, you should allow yourself to change things as it goes on and I personally would argue this depends on how you write your scripts. This is definitely a person-by-person person thing, but you could also be willing to change things even after the script has been finalized. And I feel like this only works if either you're working on the comic by yourself, or the writing piece by yourself, sorry, or you're working very, very closely with someone who like knows the project almost as well as you do. I feel like those are the only situations where this would work, but I do it sometimes where I will rearrange uh, dialogue scenes, I might add dialogue, I might take away dialogue, I might change the shot completely uh, from what I've written. Um, and I feel like you need to be able to give yourself that luxury, that ability to change things if you feel like they're not working. Because what might work in a script format might not work in a comic format. And I'm going to bring up animation as well just because I am an animator. But what you, what might work in comic form or like in book form might not work on the actual like on the silver screen like in film. So you need to be willing to accept change and allow things to kind of evolve on the fly. And I feel like the best way to do that is to not really have too solid of a plan when you start, you know? Know where you want the story to go, know where you want the characters to go, but I feel like it's best to leave everything in the middle malleable. And like, give yourself the opportunity to change it if need be. <coughs> oh my god. Finally the sneeze came out. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Every single time I try to do an art stream, something goes wrong. Uh, when I was trying to set up this morning, for some reason, the the exact same setup that I used last time, the setup that worked perfectly fine last time, wasn't working. And I got really frustrated all over again, and I was like, why 
is it not working this time? What changed? What's different? And I, I don't know how I fixed it, but I fixed it. And we were able to start on time. <laughs> I'm gonna draw, um, I probably should have done it before I got to this page, but I'm gonna draw like a proper layout, like a bird's eye view layout of this unit. And I need to do the same thing for um, the main location in Forget Me Not at Astromeria because I, <laughs> object permanence is <laughs> not something that I'm good at. So I need to actually have some like reference sheets for the locations uh, and I'll probably do that later. It'd be much smarter to have that than to just have old pages open and <laughs> be like oh yeah that's what it looks like um, and like wing it because I I did that for a few locations in Forget Me Not Ashtomeria. I just kind of winged it in terms of where everything was which worked for Asinite because in Asinite, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but in Asinite they never stay in one location for very long. They're moving quite a bit. So it kind of worked in Asinite for me to not have uh, specific like floor plans and stuff of the locations they were in because they were never there for long enough for me to make a really, really bad continuity error. Um, but for Astromeria, it's gonna be different. So I need to, I need to have layouts for rooms just to keep them consistent. And like, uh, should do a size sheet for the items in the room in relation to the characters, just so that um, things aren't changing sizes every now and again. Comics are a lot of work. <laughs> Comics are a lot of work. There's so much more than just drawing pages. It's writing the script, getting proofreaders, alpha readers, if you're lucky, a co-writer on the script, um, going through several edit phases, making character sheets, making environment sheets, drawing the pages, redrawing the pages. Like, I... <laughs> There's a lot more work that goes into comics than just drawing. Uh, which, you know, I, I know what I signed up for. I knew what I signed up for when I started making this kind of stuff. So it's no one's fault but mine. <laughs> and the fact that uh, I can't exactly hire help right now. Like, I have a co-writer and or slash alpha reader, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, but the only reason I have them is because he's interested enough in my work to just want to do it. Like, he, he offers and I show him stuff and we just kind of work together. It doesn't really feel like work when we co-write. Um, so I'm very, very lucky in that regard. And my co-writer has got me, has put the idea in my head that there should be a second Forget Me Not spin-off. Because one is planned. One is for... Um, two characters by the name of Cry and Silas. Cry is the gift tuber that you're looking at right now, and Silas is. Uh, don't want to spoil who Silas is, <laughs> but Silas is another character. Um, they have a spin off dedicated to them, and my co writer ages ago put the thought in my head that there should be a second spin off but this spin-off revolves around Maynard and possibly Zendaya as well and I hate that I love that idea <laughs> so um I'm not sure what a spin-off starring Maynard and Zendaya would actually entail though so I don't know if it'll actually happen but um it could be fun it could be really fun get to expand on even more side characters be nice I don't know I have a lot of ideas and projects that I want to get done. Uh, so I feel like this one should probably be on the back burner for a little bit, if it even happens. But yeah. Could be nice. I do a lot of my stuff digitally now, I'm realizing. I used to hand draw my thumbnails. I have, I still have the, of course I still have it, but I still have the sketchbook that I hand drew most of my, forget me not one, uh, 
thumbnails in. And I really, really like that effect of just like flipping through a page and seeing all the thumbnails. Uh, and I've been thinking about hand drawing the Forget Me Not Ashamiria thumbnails, but I bought the iPad specifically to like be able to work on stuff, both thumbnails and more serious illustrations um, away from my desk. And like while I'm at friends place, while I'm at family's place and stuff like that. So I feel like I kind of need to do the thumbnails on the iPad now. Uh, but that being said, I do, um, I do plan on sharing the thumbnails. I've already shared quite a few of them on Forget Me Not's Patreon page, but I do, I want to do a massive revamp of the Patreon page before I plug that. Um, because... I'm really, really bad at posting rewards on time. But yeah, this this was today. This was today's Forget Me Not page. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, hopefully next time we have much less hiccups. We have like no hiccups at all when it comes to doing the art streams, but only time will tell. Um, but yeah, for now, if you knew, then you wouldn't know. But if you know, you know. Uh, stay warm, stay cozy, stay toasty. If you sneeze during the stream at all, bless you. And uh, we're doing Silent Hill 2 tomorrow. There's like a there's like a 90% chance we're gonna be doing Silent Hill 2 tomorrow. So uh, yeah, tune in for that. Bye bye everyone.